This is Abe Friedtanzer from cinemadailyus.com, and I'm so thrilled to be speaking with Mark Turtletaub about his new film, Jules. How are you, Mark? I'm good, Abe. How about you? Good, good. Can you tell me what kind of science fiction you read or watched growing up? You know, I read, uh, I, I watched a, a little bit uh, back in the day, sort of classic science fiction, but I read more. Uh, when I was a kid, they used to have books that you turned over, and half of it would be a novel, um, like Childhood's End uh, by Clark, and then you would turn it over, and there would be another complete novel by a different author on the second half of the book, uh, and uh, different, uh, I don't remember all the names, Abe, but there were a bunch of them. So would you consider this film science fiction or not quite? I would consider it's one of the elements, Abe. Uh, it's a it's a combination, which is what intrigued me about it. You don't usually find stories which have all of these different elements in one movie. Uh, and this one had, uh, of course, it had the science fiction element. It has a story about somebody who's aging, so it is great emotion, but it's not melancholic. Uh, it's deep and it has feeling, but not melancholic. It has great humor. It has wild inventiveness. It's kind of a buddy movie about three people finding friendship later in life. Uh, and it has a four foot 11 inch alien. So you put all that together uh, and you don't see those things usually together in one movie. I agree. What was your collaboration with uh, Gavin Steckler right in, you know, working with on the script? Well, I was fortunate. The script was handed. What you see on the screen is 90% of what I got. Uh, it was already uh, a finished screenplay when it was sent to me. Uh, two other producers, Debbie Liebling, Liebling and Andy Daly, had worked on it and then sent it to me. Uh, and uh, so I'd like to take credit for the screenplay, but it was mostly his work. Great. And of course, a big draw of the film is Ben Kingsley. What, how, how are you able to get him? And what was his, what was his interest in the, in the project like? You know, I thought, I immediately thought of him as the first person I wanted to cast because I hadn't seen him do anything like this before. And I knew that the movie, because it's so wildly inventive, it needed uh, to have real grounding. And I knew that having him at the center would ground the movie. Uh, and of course it does, and, and he did. Uh, and we sent it off to him and within five days he said, I'm in. Uh, he, he fell in love with the screenplay much as much as I had. You have a favorite performance of his, aside from this film, of course? Oh, I don't know. You know, sort of the usual ones, uh, Schindler's List, Gandhi. I mean, he's, uh, you know, where do you stop? Sexy Beast. Uh, he, But, you know, we haven't seen him do something like this. At least I hadn't. Uh, and so that's what was really attractive to me. And he looks so different also. Uh, we haven't seen him with a, often with a full head of hair and those glasses. And he gets lost in Milton. I agree. I agree. I'm also happy you mentioned Sexy Beast because I feel like Gandhi and, Schindl and Schindler's List, that's one type of performance, but Sexy Beast is something that I think oh, is, is in some ways the polar opposite of, 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 of Milton also, that it's, you know, it's what he might be like if he had no inhibitions, but he's still this, this gentle person, despite how society has sort of, you know, written him off in some ways. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's a unique performance. And I think Harriet Sansom Harris is terrific. I think she has been very underrated for many years. I was excited to see her recently in Hacks. And she, I think, brings also a very sort of um, authentic nature to her part as well. Yeah, Abe, you know, it. It. she's one of those uh, people that everyone loves but may not immediately uh, think of. But people in the industry know her and love her. Uh, she's uh, she's remarkably talented in uh, uh, both her stage work and, and in film and television. And rounding out that trio, we have Jane Curtin, who obviously is very well known for, you know, her comedy. And I think the perfect balance to those three. Yeah, that's the key word is the balance is that, you know, you have Sir Ben and you have Harriet on sort of one side. And in fact, in the story, they are together on one side and then in comes Jane Curtin with her edginess Joyce is with her edginess and 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 kind of upsets everything and yet by the middle of the movie uh she's part of the trio and uh, goes through this transformation which is lovely so yeah I, I was really 
not only the three of them, but then Zoe Winters, who's just done uh, you know, some great work on Succession, and and uh, Jade Kwan, who plays the alien. I was uh, it was an abundance of riches. I think I had possibly just been a succession when I saw Zoe and I was like, hold on a second. Is that her? Because, you know, it's, it's a small enough role in succession, but then it's really a very key one in some ways. And so I think she's the type of person who who people will notice. It's a different generation of people who will who will notice her as compared with the other the three leads of the film. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting because we we have screened this film now for all sorts of audiences, and it's really resonating across the board with all age groups. And that was a surprise, to be honest with you. You know, we expected, okay, for a, a certain people of a certain age, over 50 or whatever, over 35 at least, who have parents that might be going through some of this stuff, uh, would re relate to the movie. But we have found because of the humor uh, uh, that it touches and and the and the emotion it touches all age groups. Absolutely. And what about Jade? Where did you where did you find her? Uh, you know, she was a she was a gift to me. Uh, Jade was a a, a fellow who's who who worked on our prosthetics. A very talented guy. When I was talking about how can we get the right person, he said, oh, you got to talk to Jade Kwan. Uh, and so I read uh, eight different uh, actors for that role, and she was clearly the best. And uh, it was really a job that could be thankless, although all the reviewers are starting to talk about her because she's so present in every scene. And it gives the actors, uh, the other actors, somebody to perform with and against. Uh, and uh, that's really a testimony to her. Did you always have a vision of the, you know, the prosthetics and what Jules was going to look like? Yeah, I did. I knew I wanted, first of all, I knew I wanted a real person that I didn't want to do this CGI because, he, as I said, it gives the actor something uh, to play against. But I also knew I wanted it. And it's kind of your first question, like, what did you read growing up? I wanted it to be sort of a classic science fiction look. So it's a gray blue alien like we have seen in a thousand old movies or at least a hundred old movies. Uh, and it's a ship that looks like uh, a ship that could have come out of, you know, the day the earth stood still or Flash Gordon or something like that. Uh, so I knew we wanted to have something that was very classic looking. And uh, you mentioned these reviews coming out. Has anything surprised you from what, what people are saying about the film? No, I'm just happy that it's uh, it's receiving so much love. Uh, and it's important because these independent films like Jules depend on word of mouth and reviews. And so people like you putting the word out, Abe, are critical. And if somebody likes the movie, please tell them, go on out and and, re and tell your friends about it uh, because it's really important. But no, the... The reviews have been have been very positive. That's great. I had the chance to see your previous film, Puzzle, uh, at Sundance. Uh, I don't know how many years ago it was now, um, but that was. I feel like there's a a similar softness uh, to that film. Do you think the two are are sort of related? You know, I guess you know we keep you know we are who we are right <laughs> you can't uh and i think every they say every director keeps making the same film over and over this is very different in terms of subject material and tone but i think there's a there's a maybe a humanist uh strain that i i look i look to find sort of the the core in everyone uh and that always interests me yeah and i also i was looking at the films that you've produced which i think a lot of them are sort of not necessarily solitary movies, because some of them do have a core duo, but I think that they're all films that are really are very character driven. And again, nothing too flashy, something like Safety Not Guaranteed. I think of the visual effects in that, which are, you know, appropriately sort of muted and simple. And then, of course, Away We Go, which I think is one of the films I saw early on in, in my career and really, really enjoyed. Yeah, great performances in all of those movies. Uh, yeah, we were we were fortunate to have great actors and great directors in our producing side. How have things changed over the past, you know, decade or two in terms of your work in the industry? Well, for me personally, I've moved away from producing into directing. We have a production company that Big Beach that does all that work. Uh, and uh, I've focused more on directing, uh, which uh, I'm very happy doing at this stage of my career. In terms of the industry, I mean, we're all going through a really rough time. Uh, and it's important. What's going on right now is critical, uh, not only for the actors and the writers, but for the entire uh, industry. 
we did a screening last night of 100 people and uh, of our of our crew. And, you know, all those folks are out of work. Uh, you know, the cinematographers and the, ca the camera operators and the grips. And, you know, unless, you know, unless they were on an independent film that had an exemption and there's only a few of those, uh, they're out of work. So it's a it's a tough time right now. Hopefully everything will be resolved. What do you see as the, the future of, of independent film in the next five, 10 years? Well, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful because of, uh, for one thing, you can't call them independent films, uh, uh, Oppenheimer and, uh, and Barbie, but you can call them original films. And you can call them films that are not dependent on uh, pyrotechnics. We don't need car chases and explosions to make those films work. And for me, the fact that so many people came out to see those movies, me included, uh, is a good sign. And uh, it's beginning, people are beginning to come back to the theaters, and that's exciting to me. I know things are likely on hold now, but do you have an idea of what you want to do next? I do, but I'm not going to talk about it yet. Uh, I have one, and as soon as the as soon as the strikes are settled, uh, then uh, we'll be we'll be announcing it. But uh, yeah, I've got a I got a project that I'm I'm looking forward to doing. Wonderful. Well, for more great conversations like this, you can check out the Cinema Daily West YouTube channel. I wish you plenty of luck with your future projects, Mark, and with this film. Thank you for taking a few minutes to speak with me. Of course, Abe. Thank you so much.